In the 1960s, the US Navy opened a research base on the Bahamian island of Andros. Using the unique location, its purpose is testing submarines. But in the recent 20 years, the Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center, OTEC, got in the focus of UFO terrorism. Is it possible that, similar to the US Air Force's Area 51 in Nevada, the US Navy has a facility researching on extraterrestrial material? Or even has contacts to alien life forms? Section 51 Hi everyone, what's up guys, Dos Geek here again with section 51. Everyone's heard of Area 51, Groom Lake, Nevada. However, 2,500 miles away, there is an underwater facility that's also highly secretive. Perched on the cusp of the Bermuda Triangle, it's called OTEC, the Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center, the American Naval Base on the Bahamas island of Andros, is a laboratory said to be used by the US Navy for weapons testing and underwater research. The OTEC covers only one square mile on land, but actually comprises 1,670 square miles of the surrounding Caribbean. This ocean area is a steep-sided deep water embayment 100 miles long and 20 miles wide, with depths varying from 700 fathoms at the rim to 1,100 fathoms, more than a mile, at the northern end. By any reckoning, this is a huge amount of underwater space. UFO and USO activity in and around OTEC fuels speculation that the US government is secretly working with extraterrestrials, engineering and testing alien technology. Indeed, since its construction in 1959, numerous UFO and USO or unidentified submerged objects have been sighted all around OTEC while it is not unusual for these sightings to occur around US military installations, the frequency of sightings is alarming. To bring further findings to the table, from the installation itself, there are cables that run hundreds of meters along the ocean floor to an area called the Tongue of the Ocean. This cavern drops to a depth of 2000 meters in some places, so why are there these cables running down into the depths of the ocean? At this point, we can only speculate and the current running theory is that they are communication cables. Communicating to what or who we just don't know. Other suggestions on this location is that the base itself was built on the site of the lost city of Atlantis. The idea behind these claims is that the base was built on the ruins because of certain energies that the ancient lost city supposedly had. Moreover, in 1994, Newsweek reported the discovery of a pyramid under the Bermuda Triangle. And not just any pyramid. Sonar tracing mapped the pyramid's outline and showed it rising to a height of some 780 feet from the otherwise flat ocean floor 1,200 feet below the surface of the Atlantic. The discovery was made and then confirmed by Captain Don Henry, who discovered the puzzling phenomenon while making sonar tracings of the seafloor in an area of the Atlantic between South Bimini Island and the north end of the Kaysal Bank. He was staggered when he realized that this undersea pyramid was some 300 feet higher than the Cheops Pyramid with a base of a thousand feet square. Dr. J. Manson Valentine, anthropologist and zoologist at the Miami Museum of Science, is convinced and points out 
that the area where the pyramid is located was once dry sand. The area has long been suggested as the site of Atlantis. The final consideration of this naval base is to think about the fact that the base is built on the edge of the Bermuda Triangle. Countless ships and aircraft have gone missing over the years without a trace as well as unexplained magnetic anomalies and strange losses of time having been experienced. It is believed by some researchers that it could be the underwater place of transit points for UFOs arriving here from other dimensions. A German historian and scuba diver, Dr. Michael Preisinger, has recorded the exact location and value of deviations in magnetic fields off the Bahamas coast. Scientists to whom he has shown the figures do not dismiss the possibility that they are caused by micro wormholes. His researches have also led him to wonder whether the American OTEC naval base on Andros Island is not perhaps on account of the same wormholes. And he has reached some new conclusions concerning Atlantis and the Bahamas. I knew that the theory of compass deviations as being caused by stargates went back some way. I was now told that the extremely high incidence of UFO sightings in the Bahamas archipelago had been associated by some researchers with these stargates. Based on the stories I'd heard, I chose more than half a dozen points at which to die. Fish Hotel, Lifford K, and White Hole, near Nassau, Lost Blue Hole, about an hour by boat from Nassau, Dogleg Reef, an hour by boat from Marathon, in the Florida Keys, the Atlantis Wall, near Bimini, sunken train, near Eleuthera. In the waters off Andros Island, strange craft have been seen from time to time which not only resemble UFOs, but which display the same unbelievable swiftness of motion and execute the same incredibly sharp turns. A Viennese businessman told me that, once, when he was yachting off the coast of Andros, he glimpsed, two miles away, it was a very clear day, in waters over a mile and a half deep, a motionless object he thought was a whale, coming to within almost half a mile of the object which was now gleaming oddly the yachter observed that it was some kind of man-made craft of ultra-modern design. There's also the so-called Bimini Wall, thought by many to be a remnant of Atlantis. I believe that some of the stones making up the wall appear to be man-made, not because they came from Atlantis, but because they were left there during the American Civil War. My attention, though, keeps returning to the underwater stargates of the Caribbean, which I discovered with my friends Al Miller and Joel Green. I continue to wonder what might be the next step in researching these stargates. I have a proposal. It would be interesting to actually try to enter one of these stargates, except that they are usually microscopic to an extreme degree, and they tend to fluctuate in and out of existence. All of these coincidences and these stories together start to put an interesting picture on OTEC and for us at least, lead us to believe that there is more going on here that meets the eye. I used to work at OTEC. The Navy uses the area as a place for submarines to test fire torpedoes and to calibrate sonar. During my time there, I had two strange experiences. One involved an anomalous radar contact and the other was a sighting of two UFOs that I later reported to the National UFO Reporting Center. The radar incident was featured on an episode of UFO Hunters, Season 3, Episode 8, Underwater Area 51 and the UFO sighting was used in the 2010 film, Return to the Bermuda Triangle. It is definitely a strange place. Today, OTEC employs over 400 Americans and 170 Bahamians, US Navy soldiers and civilians. Much like Area 51, there are warnings all over the perimeter of the base, warning people not to stray past the perimeter or else. If none of the different theories surrounding OTEC can be totally proven, one thing is for sure, is that there is a hell of a lot of UFO and USO activity in and around this mysterious base. This base is situated on the edge of the Bermuda Triangle, which, and as most of us know, is a hot spot for UFO, USO activity. As well as mysterious disappearances of aircraft and ships of all sizes. 
but at the end, there is a good chance that we just may never know. Section 51 is on social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Don't forget to hit that like button and that bell button too. Don't forget to share the video and to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. This was Dos Geek with Section 51. I'll be back really soon. Open your eyes, watch the sky, live long and prosper.